I got color on I this see fish. Yeah, we got Richie's here. It's looking like a good fish at Richie. Yeah, we got two fish on here. You know, another thing, John, keep yours under the surface. Oh, I want to bring yeah, them up to the top. That's what oh, I was looking fish. for right oh, there, okay. buddy. Come to Papa, baby. Woo -hoo! Right, let's do a double net. Here we go. Bring them in. We're going to do a double Move header. Move them forward. Let's that's get them both, rough. baby. Go. Now, that's what we were looking for. Okay. Wow. Straight up with the net. Perfect, Andy. Nice job. Okay. Wow. Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We're here at Stellwagen Banks today with Captain Johnny Walker, trying to jig some cod. John, I think I got the first cod of the day coming up here. Yes, we do. There we go. Look at that. John's the captain of the Paul Marie out of Boston Harbor. So we've come up out of Manchester today. Uh, what, do we, what can we expect today, John? Obviously, we've got our first cod of the day. Yeah, you're going to see the highest concentration of cod, and we also have some good opportunities for haddock, pollock, maybe even some wolfish and some cusk. Oh, this is going to be Guys? a heck of a day. There we go. you got a player, you got a player there, there, don't you? Fish on. Oh, okay. Johnny, you said releasing these fish now. You want to do it a certain way. You like to tail first into the water, right? Tail first seems to bring them back to life because we're bringing them up from some pretty deep depths. And uh, that seems to do a nice job bringing them right back. So we got a nice fish. We might need the net on that one. Johnny, you know what? I think you got a pretty big ling on there. That's wow. one of the largest lings I've ever seen. <laughs> look at this. You know, I'll get that for you, John. Those whiskers really give it away, don't they? Wow. Look at that is what you call a baseball bat ling right there. Oh my God, and this is a good eating fish. This is a beautiful looking ling. Look at the size of this thing. Wow, well, Andy, this a, uh, It's amazing that some, some of the fish we see coming up in a place like this, John. You know, I, I, you know from my experiences too, this is one of the, probably one of the best eating fish you can get. And this is the fish that you gotta take care of. They yeah. say to ice them right away, right? Yeah, that's a, that fish is very white flesh and it'll spoil really, really fast. That is a good looking ling. So what we wanna do is we wanna get them bled up immediately, get them on ice and Treat them nice. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. That is a beautiful looking link. Anyway, he's going to make it for the dinner table. Yeah, We've got we'll a pile of ice in here. Put him in the cooler, chill him down, and we will have him on a barbecue tonight, huh? Yep, absolutely. Very nice. Good job. That was a nice fish. That is, that is one big link. Oh, there we go. Nice, on Andy. Diamond jig. Hit it, on a, a hit it on the fall, Andy. Yeah, just as it fluttered oh, down. Oh, I'm getting popped here. I'm getting. Oh, man. Ready? Oh, there he is. That's nice, Rich. A couple of fish on here. Looks like we're on top of them. Oh, that feels a little better, Andy. John, what time of year does this fishery start? It's a year-round fishery. The key out here is finding out where they are at what time of the year. Generally, middle to late summer this time of year, we really have to get out here deep on the back side of the bank into some deep water uh, to find them. And why is that? Is the water a little cooler out here, or is there more bait? It's definitely cooler. There's a lot of bait this time of year. And the big problem with inshore cod fishing this time of year is there's a lot of dogfish. And they really make your day miserable. Oh, I know about them. <laughs> so you're just basically trying to get away from those pesky critters. Exactly. How's that one feel, Andy? Not that big, but you know, these are good fighting fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good eating fish, too, for that matter. It's not going to be bad, though. This one doesn't feel too bad, either. Let's see what we got here. You know, once you get these fish up off the bottom, 20, 30 feet, they come up a little bit easy. They just get, just feel heavy. Yeah, you just want to keep steady pressure on them. You really don't want to pump the rod yeah. too much and just. Yes, yeah, pretty that fish. One? Not very big, but very pretty. And this one's got a little bit of weight to it. I'm hoping it's a codfish here. Let's see what we got. Still got a ways to go, actually. Yeah, we're fishing in uh, about 250, 260 depth. So once you hook up, you got a little bit of work to get. Oh, them to I got. Surface. You know what I got? I knew I felt good. I got twins. I got, oh, a cod, nice I got a cod on the top and I got a dreaded dogfish on the bottom. Oh, How's that? Man. 
Pretty Caught on the top is not that bad, though. We'll take a look at him. Get him off first. Do you need a hand there, Rich? Uh, you know what, Andy? It would help, Mike. It definitely, it definitely would help. All right, me. then I'll take care of the cod. And, <laughs> and you'll uh, leave me with this pretty I'll thing. I'll leave the spiny dogfish That's to you. That's fine. I'll take him. Now, folks, when you handle those spiny dogfish, they're really That's something you really dangerous. want to watch because they have those two horns. Yep. And they can get you. And if you, if you get hit by them, you're definitely going to get a nasty infection. There's no doubt about that. I had that grip. Where? Up oh, there. It's right there. Get a little touch there, Rich? Yeah, I actually, I just said, now, John, when you want to set the hook, you want to come up one even motion, right? And just, nice and steady. Oh, there he is. Just right like there. That. That'll work. Got him? Yep, sure do. No, I'm, I'm a little envious of you guys. You've uh, <coughs> switched to the fluke balls with uh, some clam baits on them. I'm still working the diamond jig. And that looks like they're wanting those clam baits a little more. It seems like, actually, Eddie, it seems like they're taking that top hook. The last couple of fish we've had have been on that top hook. And I think uh, it's nice because you get a chance of getting a double header with that bullet down there and you get the perfect weight with it. Now, now John, uh, during the course of a bite like we've got going here, will it change? Like, will they change their preferences? Yeah, a lot of times uh, I like to put one or two different options down for them and really see what's hot. Okay, if you start to get one or two uh, on one bait over the other, then a lot of times we'll convert over. Maybe get two or three of that particular bait in the water, whether or not it's a jig or a bait rig. You know, that's true of a lot of different kinds of fishing is you, you really want to look around, see what's happening in the guy next to you, and maybe either work with what he's got and improve on it, or if you've got your own thing going, just stick with it if you're catching fish. That makes a lot of sense. Should How's that fish doing, Rich? Yeah, we should be able to see some color pretty soon. He's not a monster. It's like when you, you know when you hit that right fish, you know? It's like you set the hook and he just don't want to come off the bottom. Yeah, there's no... This guy came off pretty easy. We'll take a look at what we got here. There he is. Uh, I just got That's you a cod. right here, Rich. Okay. That's a cod. Good, healthy-looking fish. Not a bad fish at all, right? Come here, you. Oh, there we go. Nice. I'll take that all day. Very now that's, healthy that's a keeper cod fish. It is. And uh, now the size limit on these fish, John? Uh, currently, the limit's 23 inches. And 10 per person per day is the regulation. Okay. Now I notice you've had really quite a resurgence in these fish here. I mean, what do you attribute that to for the most part? Well, for me. Straight down. Uh, straight down. Tail first. And there we go. What goes. they've done is they've put in some, uh, some revolving closures for the commercial guys. Okay, so they're really trying to keep a lot of areas open, let some of these cod rebound. Okay, and over the past few years. Got a bump there? Looks like I'm getting a couple of bumps myself. Let me sneak by you. So over the last few years, this has really continued to improve. Yeah, we've really seen an increase in cod, both in quantity and in uh, closeness to shore. You can really get some of these cod real close to shore, especially in the winter months. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory, fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. You know, Johnny, we just got back up on here. We're going to try some jigging now. He said we try to bait them a little bit later. So we got our 16-ounce hammered chrome jigs on. Got a little teaser up ahead of that. And let's see if we can get something going on the jigs. One of the things we're doing is we're dropping it down, very sharp uplift, make a lot of motion, drop back, and then after a few turns, you're up the bottom, drop back again, and get that jig right down to the bottom. Yeah, you want it? Oh, there you okay, go, guys. Oh. There's a fish, on. Huh? Yeah, you're, you're very important. Right on the drop down, guys, on that one. Very important to stay in contact with the bottom, right, John? Yeah, you really need to tend bottom with these diamond jigs. You should feel it hit every time, and if not, you just got to click it. Put the line back down, tear it back down there, and jig again. Okay, it's nothing tremendously huge, but it feels like a good solid fish. All right. You know, one of the things we do is when we hook up a fish, even though I've got the rod in kind of shotgun position here, as Rich would call it, we hook up that fish and we switch over to our natural side the way John has that rod right now. Yeah, and you'll notice these fish, John, they hit pretty much all the time. They're going to whack that jig on the fall, right? That's so what happened here. Felt a couple little taps on the way up, dropped it back down on the fall, and boom, he was there. You know, the other thing that happens is we get a lot of scope of the line out, like I do right now. I'm going to retrieve this jig, bring it right back to the boat, drop it straight down again, and start all over again. Yeah, and you know, another thing that's real important is to stay in contact with that jig on the way down. When you come up on your lift, you want to keep that line tight, come down, feel that jig fall, because that's when you're going to get that hit. You're going to get that hit while that jig is falling. But John, what do you think this replica is? What does it look like down there to these fish? 
Nice little fish. You got a pollock there? Guys, I think we might have um, a pollock or a haddock. I think we might have ourselves a haddock here. Oh, very nice. Nice yeah. haddock. Real nice haddock. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, that's beautiful. Very nice. Now, that, that's haddock a good right there, guys. fish right there. Look at that mark on its back, huh? Wow. A little that's blemish a little there. Yeah. It's got it wow. on both sides. Beautiful looking fish. That is a nice looking fish. But you want to, like we said, stay in contact with the jig. And like I was saying, John, you, what, do you, what is it replica to them? Like sand eels, something like that? Yeah, generally you're thinking uh, whatever. Oh, we've got a hit top. Got a bump there. Yep. Okay. Uh, sand eels, herring, sometimes even now uh, whiting, they, they're they feeding on down on the bottom in it. And we talk about that a lot, Andy, how to get that adrenaline strike going, you know, the, the reaction yeah. strike. Yeah, diamond jig just, whoa. <laughs> we got that. <laughs> you got to grab him by the ears, John. <laughs> you got him? Oh, there's a fish. Right through the gills, yeah. Again, on the way down. You know, Rich, you, you can't say that enough, that this is about uh, getting a reaction strike from the fish. That's why you got to keep that jig moving. Yes, most definitely. It's a little smaller fish. I want to horse him up. Oh, but the only he hit. thing is we've got a long way to go. We're in about 240 <laughs> feet of water. <laughs> when I say horse him up, I went. <laughs> You'll get him up the first 30 feet pretty good. After that, it gets tough. Show us your release, John. Okay. Same as with the cod, guys. Tail first, just a little thrust. That usually brings that light back. That is so amazing. He, he took it right off. He's well on his way. Rich, got one there? Yeah, I'm working with you, Randy. Yeah, we're back here, we're still wagging banks. John, what can you tell us about these banks? Actually, this is uh, what they call a critical habitat for marine life. It's actually a national marine sanctuary, and uh, it's rated in the top five for critical habitat for whales in the world. The whales? Absolutely. Really? Now, what's the deal with the commercial fishing on here now? Well, in most cases, they keep the, uh, the dragons and the gill nets out to the outsides of the bank. You really can't get up on the bank. Uh, and believe it or not, uh, there's some monster striped bass out here, but it's uh, catch and release only. Really? Uh, it's, un it's, it's unusual to see such a wide area like this with such easy access to so many places. You know, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, New Hampshire coast too, right? Yeah, this bank actually will bring you almost all the way up to Gloucester, which is uh, Cape Ann. And uh, you follow it southeast, and uh, the end of the bank doesn't end until you're almost to P-Town at the uh, tip of Cape Cod. It's an enormous And P-Town is uh, Providence? Providence Town. All right. <laughs> I was not losing this fish, I'll tell you that much. Oh, he took everything but the yeah. kitchen sinker. Just about body, he almost got my sinker, too. Get him out, though. There we go. And now tail first right down, right? Rig. That's amazing. And look at him take right off. Right back to where you he know, came it, from. It, that flies in the face of what we always talk about for releasing fish. Yeah. You're right. It absolutely works on these cods. You drop them in backwards, the water gets in their gills, and off they go. Right, generally, Andy, when we release fish, you know, we try to swim them a little bit, and we try to revive them like a tuna style. Head first, give them that jump start that way. That's interesting with the cod going the other way. Yeah. And, but it definitely seems to work. Now, you got... I mean, you got a world of fishery out here from what I'm hearing. I mean, you got you got tuna, you got occasional halibut, you got, I mean, just an incredible amount of species. I mean, I noticed a few boats anchored up around us. These guys, you said, were tuna fishing earlier. Yeah, the bulk of the fleet out here today are tuna fishermen. And you got a combination of uh, the hardcore guys doing it for a living, as well as the rest of, you know, recreational anglers that come out here just for, uh, for fun. And the tuna are out here because they're picking off the cod? Actually, the tuna are out here in most cases uh, feeding on large concentrations of bait fish. Oh, so the same thing the cod are doing? Absolutely. The mackerel and herring, stuff like that? Mackerel, herring, there's actually a lot of whiting out in this area. Sand eels become uh, heavy at times. I guess they're not too picky, right? They'll uh, jump on just about anything smaller than them, right? That's right. This is just, I'll tell you, you know, you, you couldn't ask for better conditions. I mean, uh, how many miles offshore are we now again? Right now we're about 25 miles. 25 miles, and I mean, this is like a lake, you know? This is a beautiful, beautiful day right here. Am I uh, hanging up on you there, Rich? You I, feel my line by I chance? I think we're clear, Andy. I'll let you know when I hit. I'm uh, still dropping down here. But I mean, you know, just, you know, we got bright sunshine. We got about maybe a 5 to 10 mile an hour southwest wind. It's pushing us along nice, and it's just... Like I said, you really couldn't ask for better conditions. Oh, that looked like a bite, Andy. there, guys. And one thing you want to do when you get the touch, is you want to stay there, keep the, keep the fish, keep the rig in the zone, give the fish a chance to eat. I'm going to actually drop back a little bit to this fish. We'll see if he comes back. Certainly got a nice little touch there. That's an effective method you were doing right there, Andy. A lot of times with these fish, you'll get a couple of bites, 
and uh, you'll bring it away from it, and literally you need to drop it right back to them, and uh, they will they will take it a lot of times on that drop back. That's yeah. a lot like fluke fishing, you know. We notice that also. It's you know a lot of occasions you can give a fish a second opportunity to grab a bait, especially on a fast drift. Oh no, you're absolutely right. You want it. You want to get that rig back. Fact that fish is there. Oh, and I missed him. Get that right back to him. Let's see if he still I wants to. I got a little customer it. working my tip as well. And John, I notice you like to wait a little bit before you set sometimes, or you yeah. want to just make sure he's got it. I'm sure. But I mean, I know them big ones usually they make no bones about it. They hit. It's just that hard, hard thump, and you pretty much lock on them fish right away. Yeah, you generally know if it's uh, if it's a good cod. There's a lot of other things down there pecking away, and you know. I generally like to wait till I think I've got something worth uh, setting. I hear you. It's one of those things where you start that slow lift, and as, as you feel that weight, that's when you're actually going to go and set the hook. But it's not a crazy hook set. It's no, just a, lot a nice, times, firm lift. That's right, Andy. Once they get a hold of that bait, they're going to suck it in pretty quick. Yeah, especially with the braid now also. I mean, we talk about that an awful lot. You know, with zero stretch, you, you really don't have to drive a hook home like you would with mono. I mean, we're sitting in 249 feet of water with mono. And with all that stretch in the line, you really got to hit these fish. And I know a lot of guys still like to use mono in these depths. I just think it's so much easier to feel everything with the braid. And the braid gives you a real advantage. And the, and the smaller line diameter, less resistance against the water, lets you get down a lot easier. Places where we used to use, you know, 18 and 24 pound sinkers, you're fishing a 12 now sometimes. And you know, it, it, what it also does for you, it gives you an idea what kind of bottom you're on. You know, like, because we know when we're hitting a hard bottom, we know when we got a mud bottom before, we had that rise before, where you could actually feel that rock will come up on the side of a rock where you came up five, ten feet. Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of Northeast Angling. John, you're working a good fish there? Absolutely, Andy. This guy's taking uh, quite some time to get off the bottom. You know, I saw that you had that initial hit, did the drop back, and that fish was just waiting there. Yeah, I gave a couple bites, and uh, I tried to send it the first time, nothing, so I dropped it right back, and boom. These fish are pretty aggressive. When they want to bait, especially these big guys, you can miss them once or twice and still get back to them. John, you let me know when you get colored there, and I'll get right on that fish with the net for you, because that looks like a good fish. You've been on that fish for a while now, so. When you're ready for that net, just give me a shout, okay? That's a good plan. You know, it's make. amazing. We've done uh, we've on this trip a couple of times, and each time seem to pull a pretty nice fish and right around the same spot. I was just about to say it seems to be on the same exact spot. Let me know if you get color on that, John. I'll give you the heads up. All righty, that's got to be getting yeah, pretty close now, at this guys. point. Yeah, there it is. There I, it is. I see it. it. Looks like a really got to look at that fish. fish. Yeah, right. it's a good solid fish. Come to me, come to me. That'll work. Nice okay. job, John. Nice fish, bud. Beautiful. Nice fish. Up and over. All right. That's a nice healthy fish right there. It's a Stellwagen bank codfish, huh? Let's get that guy out of the net. I'll we'll take a look at him. And then we'll take the hook out of him. You got it. You know, it's there. amazing the variety of sizes. You know, a lot of species we fish for, you'll be fishing in a spot and you'll see, you know, mostly a specific size class. But here, mixed up. it seems like you don't know what size these cod are going to be when they come up. Definitely the little mixed guys up. are mixed right in with these big guys. And he jumped on a bullet. Huh? That right. one jumped right, right on, on the bottom hook. Right on a cod bullet that one jumped on. Let's take a look at that. That's a, that's a nice looking fish. Yeah, it's got him right through the lip. Perfect hook up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great fish. Now, you weren't kidding when you told us. We, we didn't know what to expect out here in terms of size, uh, different species, but clearly there's a lot, of, a lot of fish here, a lot of different size fish, and this is a wonderful sporting fishery. Wow. And I'll Very tell nice. you, like I said, these fish do fight. They, they, when they dig for the bottom, boy, that initial setup, oh. you know, they'll pull, you know, they'll, they'll pull 10, 15, 20 feet of drag on you right when you hook them up the first time. That's yeah. a good-looking fish right there. Very yeah, the initial run is really something. Hey guys, what do you think? We're gonna put them back in? Yeah, let's, you think let's you can see, get them back in? Let's down see if we can get them sure. back in there. Okay. And uh, let's keep on going. We'll keep our karma strong. All right. Let's see what goes on. And you know, the good thing about that also is if you are taking a few for the table, you can watch that fish. He, he well, there he goes. There he Absolutely goes. perfect. <laughs> he shot down like a rocket. But if he didn't, they come up and you can you can take the fish. I always keep the net handy in case they decide to float. We'll pick them back up instead of wasting them. We'll oh, of course. The that's, that's a great, great idea. That's a great yeah. idea. I agree with you. That was a nice fish. Nice job on that one, John. Thank you.
You know, I've done a lot of wreck fishing before, and, and it seems like when you get that good fish, you got to get them off the bottom quick. So fishing these slopes and it, not too much structure, it, it's nice. You can let them take that 15 or 20 feet of line when you first hit them, and that's exactly what this guy did. Oh, that looks like a really good solid fish you got there, right? I, I got a ways to go, but I really think I'm going to need a net on this one. Uh, we'll give you okay. a hand. John, you're going to have to get that. I'll get that. the net for you guys, and uh, I'm going to keep my bait on the bottom at the same time. I don't blame you. Usually when you, usually when you run into them, them big boys, there's oh, one yeah. or two more with them, right, John? Generally, they're going to concentrate in the uh, same size. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so if you're in a good size school of fish, first one or two you bring up, okay. Getting a little action right. No! Oh, yeah, there we go, buddy. Speak of the devil. Now we're talking. That looks like a decent fish, too. Well, I better hustle up now. I guess I got the net now. <laughs> you might, you might, you just turned into the net man, Andy. Hey, I you think guys I just got... passed the baton, Andy. All right, my God. <laughs> Let me get this out from under John, you let's try. Why don't you slide a little up front, John? I want to keep these two fish clear if we can. Good you know, idea. one of the things you have when you have two anglers that have decent fish on, you keep them separated as best you can, yeah. and you need a little cooperation from them. they got to steer their fish just a little bit. Most definitely. Most definitely. That's a great point, Andy, because the last thing you want is to tie two good fish up together. You're absolutely right. You know, and, and John, I see you're working your fish up toward the bow. That's the right thing to do. And Rich, are you getting close there or no? Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. He's still down there pretty pretty far, but uh, we're getting some headway on him now. Yeah, we're at about 270, 280 here, so uh, wow. they don't come up very quick. No, camp. no. You know, one of the things I've done here, which is really important to do, if you've got a plotter in the boat, you hit a couple of good fish in a spot, you make sure you mark the spot. You know, you use your man overboard or drop a waypoint on it. You want to get back on that piece. That's a great point, Andy. We just said, you know, we were talking about how these fish generally stay together sometimes, and I popped this one, and John, you laid right up into that one after I had this one. This guy's giving me a little bit of a shake now. Okay. This, this yeah, I feels... wasn't too eager to uh, go for that net at that side. I noticed yeah. that. I seen you pay a little bit more attention to your rod after I set up on this big guy. One of the things also important here is your set, nice, steady retrieve. Work these fish up. Uh, nothing herky jerky right now. When this fish gets near the boat, you basically got that. I fish. got color on I this see fish. Yeah, we got Richie's here. It's looking like a good fish, there, Rich. Yeah, we got two fish. John's up. here. You know, another thing, John, keep yours under the surface. Oh, we want to bring yeah, them up to the top. That's what oh, I was looking fish. for right Whoa, there, nice. buddy. Okay. Come to Papa, baby. <laughs> right, let's go double net. Here we go. Bring them in. We're gonna do a double Move header. Move forward. Move forward. Let's that's get them both, baby. There we go. Now that's what we were looking for. Okay. Wow. Straight up with the net. Perfect, Andy. Nice job. Okay. Wow, let me get, get him these out of fish out of here. How's that, John? Here you go, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we came looking for. That's exactly what we came that? looking for. Look Beautiful. at the size of this guy, pod. boy. That's a good looking Whoa, fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's nice. That is a beautiful, look at the beautiful belly on fish. That guy. He's been eating well today. I think so. I got him right up in the lip, too. Look at that, John. Bailey even had this fish hooked. That's why, again, you want to just take it nice and slow with these fish. Absolutely. Steady and just, pressure. That's it. I agree with you. That is just a beautiful looking codfish right there. Well, you guys got a couple of nice fish here. And, you know, John, you told us we were going to see some pretty fish here, and you weren't wrong. You know, I, I've been dying. I said I want to get a 30, at least a 30 pound class cod today. I think we finally got it. I mean, I can't thank you enough for putting on to these fish, John. Uh, I'll tell you what, guys, this is uh, all my pleasure. Anytime I can get out here on these waters and fish, I'll take it. This yep. is something that everybody should do at least once. Get out here in the season, take advantage of this great bite. You'll have a great time. Thank you for watching Northeast Angling. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations as seen on this show at neangling.com. See you on the water.